Hello again. This week it's going to be less about my portfolio and more just about the stock market overall and timing the market. Uh, just a brief brush up about my portfolio though. I'm down quite a bit from the last episode a week ago. Uh, we had a huge rally and then it was followed up with a huge uh, decrease on, I think it was Thursday, Jay Powell came out with his gloomy forecast of what's to come for the next year and a half or so. And I think market overall took about a 5% hit for the Dow Jones over the, the last five days. And then S&P and NASDAQ followed less severely, less severe declines, but uh, we all took a hit. So here's the chart showing that I was up almost $800 and now I'm only up around 400. The current valuation of my portfolio is hanging around $4,000. That includes some deposits I put in. I, I just deposited $200 today and my last deposit of $200 is still trying to transfer over. It takes about five business days, so it lags a little bit, but I've maintained about where I was before. That includes the 5% drop we saw from last week overall. Here are my five day gains and losses. Uh, so the 11th was a hard hit day for everybody and then gained some of those back, but I'm still down about $100 over the last five days. I believe that includes my $200 deposit though, so it's probably more like I'm down $300 still. Again, I'm a long-term investor. I really don't care about any of this stuff. In fact, I like to see when stocks are down, I get to go to my positions and I can scroll down to all the positions that are in the red. I can see Pfizer's down 11% since when I bought. I bought at an average of $37.80 and now it's $33.40. So I actually put in an order to buy it today. I believe my order was $32.77. That's the, the price I wanted to buy at. And it didn't get hit, so they were canceled. But I like to scroll down to the bottom and see some of my positions that are, aren't doing very good. And any position you buy in the red this early on, uh, if you buy it again, it's just going to lower your average share price. So if I bought Pfizer or Pepsi, my average price per share is going to drop down significantly. So I did put those orders of Pfizer in. They didn't get fulfilled, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I bought those two. It's a TAN ETF, so it's a solar ETF. I really, really believe in solar. Um, my current energy bill for my house just isn't high enough to justify investing in some solar panels, but I believe in the future of solar for just for the entire planet. So I'm gonna start slowly investing into TAN, it's the ETF. The TAN ETF, top holdings are Solar Edge, Tech, Enphase Energy, and First Solar. I see these companies being promoted on a lot of social media sites, especially Instagram. Um, First Solar is always on my feed. They're always trying to give a promotion away for if you live in a certain area of SoCal, you get a certain discount and all that. So I'm familiar with them enough to be a little bit more confident in investing in this ETF. However, I know it's sort of a gamble, um, but it's no more of a gamble than the Jets ETF, which, you know, the top holdings are Southwest Airlines, America Airlines, Delta Airlines, all these airlines that everyone's familiar with, but we don't know where these companies are going to be in the next three, four years. Um, with solar, I'm willing to bet that solar is going to keep going up in demand. And just from a moral standpoint, I'd rather invest in a risky ETF and lose on something I believe in then invest in a risky ETF and win on something I don't. I would rather lose my money in something like TAN than gain money in something like MO. And just speaking from a morality standpoint, um, I mentioned I'm an environmentalist. I really hope that uh, solar panel becomes the way of the future. Um, there is a fan ETF as well for, for wind tech, um, but I would rather lose money on an ETF that I believe in then gain money on an ETF that goes against my moral standpoint. Uh, I mentioned earlier in my first episode that I was investing in Altria MO. I just didn't like the thought of making money off a company I don't believe in. I, I think cigarettes are just disastrous to the environment, not to mention, you know, human health. It's just not a company I want to see thrive, in my opinion. And by investing into those companies, I'm helping them out. I'd rather put my money into these uh, TAN and FAN ETFs because it makes me proud to own them. 
the dividend yield ratio on the ETF is only 0.27% and the expense ratio is actually 0.71%. So I'll actually be coming out as a net loss on investing in this ETF, but it's a moral thing for me. I really want to see this company succeed and I want to be a part of it if it does. Here are some of my top positions. Last week I mentioned that I was up like 40, 50, 60% on some of them and they've kind of normalized back down to the, the mid 30s on average I would say. Last week it wasn't a big purchasing week for me. This week is kind of the same. Uh, my, my paycheck pretty much went entirely to my parents so I get paid next week and I will start investing more heavily again back to the $200 a week thing. I might even jump up to 250 or 300 a week so what you're seeing here is really nothing new. You saw it last week. My biggest losses in my positions are still Pfizer, Pepsi, and Medtronic. They're the same companies that were down last week as well. So nothing really has changed there. And without further ado, here is the entire reason for this channel, my very first dividend. It's from the company All In. I had one share of it, and it paid me 20 cents on the 10th. Um, 20 cents is obviously nothing but I'm still really excited about seeing this. It's the first of many. And if you go to your profile, it tells you your dividends receivable for the upcoming week or two, I believe. Um, so I'm gonna see some from Pepsi, Bank of America, and Waste Management. Um, $3.32 is coming my way, which is much, much more than 20 cents. But I'm really excited to see these numbers starting to roll in. This is the kind of thing that really lights a fire under me that makes me want to keep doing this. Um, it's like every month, it's little Christmas gifts, little presents that come in, and it's I get that endorphin rush, I get you know, a knock of dopamine, and it fuels me to keep investing into these companies. Uh, it's really exciting for me to see this. I know it's not a lot, but it feels really good still, and it's only really up from here. Unless companies go out of business or stop their dividends, but this kind of thing is just so exciting to me because from this point on, unless they cut dividends or the company dissolves, um, for every June I will see a $3.32 dividend for the rest of my entire life. So it's only going to get better from here on out. Some months will be better than others, obviously. If a dividend pays quarterly, uh, if it falls on like the month of July or August, then those months you'll get a huge spike. But as far as my portfolio goes right now, I will, no matter what, always see a $3.32 dividend barring they lower it or stop it. Um, and that's pretty cool. I think that's a really cool feeling to know that you can always count on this coming in later. What we saw with, with the pandemic cause with a lot of companies just kind of having to abruptly shut down, it's highly unusual. I think for a lot of people, it's going to be a once in a lifetime event. And you're not going to see a lot of companies just completely stop their dividends, especially companies that have been paying dividends for decades. Um, companies like Boeing, you're just not going to see those kind of too big to fail companies abruptly come to a complete halt where they just can't afford to pay a dividend anymore. Companies like Pepsi, uh, Coca-Cola, Microsoft, they've been paying a steady increase of dividends throughout the, throughout the years. It just doesn't happen very often. So... So I'm comfortable in stating that, you know, from this point on, I will always receive those $3.32 in every month of June from now on for the rest of my life. Um, I'm comfortable in saying that. And it's only going to get better. I've only been investing for around three months. Um, so it's only going to go up from here. Okay, now for the point of my video with uh, my little timing the market simulation game. And I want you guys to be honest with yourselves and honest with me too if you want to comment down in the comment section. Um, so say that you're invested in 401ks, Roth IRAs, brokerages, whatever, and the market is just kind of chugging along and then some good news comes out and we start hitting a bull run. Um, maybe all your accounts are up 10, 15% on the year and you're feeling pretty good about your positions. And then say something like what we just experienced happens, maybe like another pandemic or we're on the brink of war. And you are all but certain that stocks are about to tank. So for this simulation, let's just say for argument's sake that you sell at an all-time high. Um, the market has never been higher at this point and you happen to 
get lucky and you sold out at this very top right here. Your 100% cash in your uh, your 401k and your Roth and your brokerages. Okay, and now as you predicted, the market is starting to go down and it's down 5% from when you sold. Do you start investing yet? Or do you sit in 100% cash on the sidelines? You're pretty certain that it's gonna keep going and 5% in the grand scheme of things maybe isn't worth it to you to start investing and chipping in yet. But have you invested yet? Okay, now we're down about 8% from all time highs. Have you put in anything yet? Maybe 11%, 12%, maybe we're down 15%. And ask yourself if you would have put anything in yet. Do you believe that we're at the bottom or do you think there's a ways to go? And for the sake of this experiment, um, as far as the news goes, there's nothing but doom and gloom for, you know, there's no uh, hope for a cure. Or there's no hope for world peace or something. It just seems like we're only going to experience worse and worse from this point on, or at the very least, maintain what we've been experiencing. Okay, maybe you've uh, answered these questions in your head or in my comment section, but now that you've, we've gotten to what you believe is not the bottom yet, and you've seen all these like you know circuit breaking mornings where you you uh, you wake up to the stock market opening at negative seven percent, and it causes massive circuit breakers, and you're all but certain that it's not possible that this is rock bottom we suddenly get some decent news come out and investors love it. And now from the new lows we just experienced, uh, maybe the stock market comes up another 5% from there. So now it's just maybe like 10, 12% down from when you sold out. Uh, have you invested anything yet or are you still 100% cash? Does this sudden uptick in stocks make you start feeling a FOMO and do you start investing now? Okay, now say more good news comes out and we're up a little bit more, maybe only a couple percentage points off from when you sold out on. Now do you jump in? Say that we've now broken even to when you sold out. So if you invested everything back in right now, uh, you would have just broken even. No losses, no gains, you just break even. Knowing that you're breaking even, do you just jump back in expecting the market to continue raising or do you think that this is just one like huge dead cat bounce well say more new good news comes out and now we're up three to five percent above when you sold if you haven't jumped in yet at what point do you start jumping back in i'm sure some of you that are pretty investing savvy noticed that this that i was showing you was the 2008 crash um, but in the grand scheme of things it was just a blip and now we're way past all of those lows and highs and I think that for long-term investors which I believe is probably my main dem demographic here that even if you're scared to jump back in the market now that you've lost out on gains uh, it's still probably pretty safe to come back in at any point right now so that's it for this week um, I hope everyone stays safe I know there's still protesting going on and the virus hasn't gone away it's still here and it's rearing its head um, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of new infections. Um, I really hope everyone stays safe, and I'll see you next time.